Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here this morning. I'm pleased to be joined today by the Deputy Executive Director of Europol, Jean-Philippe Lecouf, as well as the Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division, Kenneth Polit, the FBI Deputy Director, Paula Bate, the DEA Administrator, Ann Milgram, and the leaders of several law enforcement partners so critical to this operation. We are here today to expose those who seek the shadows of the internet to peddle killer pills worldwide. Thanks to unprecedented international law enforcement cooperation, 150 dark net drug traffickers have been arrested around the world, including 65 right here in the United States. Led by the Joint Criminal Opioid Darknet Enforcement Team, an international law enforcement partnership, also known as J-Code, Operation Dark Huntor spanned 10 months, three continents, and more than 12 international law enforcement agencies. The graphic you see up on the screen here represents and reflects what can be achieved when we all work together. It represents global cooperation and the recovery of more than 500 pounds of illegal drugs, drugs which contained enough fentanyl for more than 4 million lethal doses. This operation seized nearly $32 million in cash and virtual currencies, the largest J-code seizure, seizure to date. Our efforts span back to the January 2021 dismantling of Dark Market, at the time the world's largest illegal marketplace on the dark net, thanks to our German law enforcement partners who helped uh, conduct that operation. We were armed with intelligence from that action, and as a result, Operation Huntor was launched, and it was launched with one clear goal, to hunt down the vendors, the buyers, the suppliers who had been hiding on that site to make sure that they did not find a new platform. And the timing was key. Since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, more people have turned to the dark net than ever before to buy drugs. Already it was a billion dollar illicit drug industry, but dark net drug revenue has surpassed pre-pandemic levels with much of the sales occurring on uh, social media platforms, including sales of fake pills. Fake pills which were often laced with deadly fentanyl and methamphetamine. And last month, the DEA Administrator Ann Milgram and I warned from this very same podium that one pill can kill. Well, Operation Dark Huntor went after the illicit drug dis distributors who use the dark net to traffic these illicit drugs and items like pill presses, which are fueling the ongoing opioid crisis plaguing our communities. The FBI Deputy Director and the DEA Administrator will describe their operations in more detail, but as part of Operation Dark Huntor, we saw dark net drug vendors running laboratories at home creating fake pills with pill presses, pills styled to look like Oxycontin, Xanax, or Adderall, but which are actually laced with fentanyl, methamphetamine, or potentially fatal doses of other narcotics. In the United States alone, this operation seized over 200,000 pills, 90% of which were found to contain counterfeit opioids or other narcotics. To put this in perspective, just two milligrams of fentanyl, a size so small it could fit on the tip of a pen, that's considered a deadly dose. Thanks to the partnership represented here, lives around the world will now be saved. Before I close, I want to address those who remain on the dark net, those who are peddling illegal drugs and thinking they are safe behind layers of digital anonymity. My message to you is simple. There is no dark 
internet, we can and we will shine a light. The agencies you see here and the thousands of law enforcement professionals that they represent will bring to bear all of their resources to protect our citizens and to hold you accountable. With that, I will now turn the podium over to Deputy Executive Director of Europol, Jean-Philippe Lecouf. Thank you very much. As Europol Deputy Executive Director for Operation, I would like to thank the Deputy Attorney General and our US law enforcement partners for inviting us today and inviting Europol to take part to this event. Europol have taken its part in coordinating the international dimension of this operation and also by analysis and enrichment of the information provided by our German colleagues and our international partners. The results obtained by this coalition of nine countries, you have the flags here on the screen, are spectacular. And most of the arrested buyers or vendors are considered by Europol as high value targets, being among the most prolific or sensitive actors on the dark web. Tor was created for privacy protection, but it is clearly misused by criminals. With such operations, based on information sharing, trust between partners and international coordination, we are sending a strong message to these criminals on the dark web. No one is beyond the reach of law, even on the dark web. More arrests are to be expected as Europol continues to work with its American and European partners to unmask these criminals and to make our world a safer place. Thank you. I now pass the floor to Assistant Attorney General Kenneth Pollitt. Thank you. Operation Dark Huntor stands as our most recent victory in the global fight against cyber-enabled drug trafficking. The online trafficking of opioids, particularly fentanyl, poses a lethal threat not only to the United States, but also to our European and Australian counterparts and beyond. This is a global threat, and it requires a global response. You see, our communities now face the constant threat of relatively easy access to dangerous illicit drugs now being peddled not on a street corner, but in cyberspace. Operation Dark Huntor highlights both the magnitude of this lethal threat and the significant efforts we are taking here at the, de at the Department of Justice to address it. So I am proud to stand here today proclaiming that the Department of Justice is fully engaged in the battle against drug trafficking, utilizing the internet to push poison into our communities. In particular, I want to thank the men and women of the criminal division and applaud their bilateral commitment with our European and Australian counterparts. Thank you to the narcotic and dangerous drug section including its trial attorneys stationed at the Special Operations Division, and the multitude of law enforcement agents assigned there and at the J-Code Task Force, who ensured that the investigations making up this operation were supported, coordinated, deconflicted, and integrated for success. To the Criminal Division's Office of International Affairs, who ensured that through mutual legal assistance, 
the United States was able to further their investigation through the use of data lawfully seized by Germany. A thank you to the attorneys from the Computer Crime and Intellectual Property Section and the Money Laundering and Asset Recovery Section's Digital Currency Initiative, who offered their expertise, their consultation, and support in these very complex and time-consuming investigations and prosecutions. To our fraud section, who joined forces with our U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Tennessee in prosecuting one of our Dark Hunter members. And last, but certainly not least, to my colleagues in over a dozen additional U.S. Attorney's Offices across our country that are handling these prosecutions. It is clear to me that only through a whole of government, and in this case, global approach to tackling cyber-enabled drug trafficking can we hope to achieve the significant results illustrated here today. Consistent, coordinated, and collaborative bilateral engagement efforts are the key to the success you see here today. The men and women of the criminal division, in close collaboration with our team of interagency and international partners, stand ready to leverage all of our resources to protect our communities through the undaunted pursuit of those who profit from addiction under the false belief that they are anonymous on the dark net. I now welcome my colleague, FBI Deputy Director Paul Abate. Thank you. AAG Polit, and uh, good morning, everyone. J-Code began in 2018 as a multi-agency initiative laser-focused on combating the borderless, worldwide distribution of illegal drugs online. Since that time, the bottom line is this. J-Code has been relentless in finding and arresting drug dealers around the world who falsely believe they can evade justice by operating on the dark net as well as keeping dangerous drugs, particularly counterfeit and contaminated drugs, off the streets and away from the thousands of people who fall victim every year. Those purchasing drugs through the dark net often don't know what they're getting or if they're about to get something that may contain a lethal dose of fentanyl. Because of that, one of the very real impacts, positively, of disrupting dark net drug sales is making the U.S. and the world a safer place. As highlighted, Operation Dark Hunter has achieved a large, uh, high-impact number of arrests and seizures, but I'd like to point out another number as well. The CDC has published that there were over 90,000 drug overdose deaths in the U.S. in 2020 alone, up more than 20,000 over the 2019 numbers. Today, we're taking some of the most dangerous, unregulated drugs off the streets of America, in addition to putting a stop to those involved in the illegal drug trade. With that, I want to thank all the partner agencies represented here and around the world who have been part of this joint, highly collaborative effort. Preventing the use of the dark net for illicit trade requires a global, interagency, interconnected response. And this only works because of the close, cohesive relationships between the 12 J-Code agencies and our many, many exceptional international partners. J-Code provides structure, intelligence, and ever-expanding technological capabilities toward disrupting the darknet criminal marketplace, neutralizing bad actors, and protecting our communities. The FBI and our Department of Justice, J-Code, Europol, and other international law enforcement partners will continue to use all investigative resources and means to identify dark, night, dark net online narcotics dealers wherever they attempt to hide to ensure that they are held accountable under the law and that justice is served. Now I'd like to introduce uh, DEA Administrator Ann Milgram. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you to the Deputy Attorney General, to Europol, to ICE, the FBI, and the United States Postal Service, and to the Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division. It is a privilege to work with each of you on this critical issue. 
We face new and increasingly dangerous threats as drug traffickers expand into the digital world and use the dark net to sell dangerous drugs like fentanyl and methamphetamine. Today's takedown shows that, drug do that instead of selling on street corners, drug traffickers today are now turning to operating on the dark net, trying to hide their criminal acts from law enforcement. This means that drug traffickers are everywhere. It means that they now operate in every single room, in every home that has a smartphone or a computer. As part of this operation, DEA took enforcement action in nine of our divisions, including our Special Operations Division. We made 36 arrests across 13 states and the District of Columbia. DEA seized dozens of kilograms of fentanyl, methamphetamine, heroin, and cocaine. We seized 31 weapons and over 200,000 fake counterfeit pills many of which were pressed with fentanyl or methamphetamine and are made deceptively to look exactly like real prescription pills. Our work has never been more important. Across the country, we are seeing surges in overdose deaths driven by fentanyl and by methamphetamine and by the increased availability of these fake counterfeit pills. These are the drugs that are driving the overdose crisis in America where 250 people die each day from overdoses and countless more overdose but are fortunate to survive. As the Deputy Attorney General highlighted, last month DEA took a rare step when we issued a public safety alert warning Americans of a dramatic increase in the availability and lethality of these counterfeit fake prescription pills. We cannot stress enough the danger of these substances. Our lab at DEA, our testing reveals that four in 10 fentanyl pills, pills containing fentanyl, now contain a potentially deadly dose, two milligrams or more. The pills we seized as part of this operation were made to look like oxycodone, like hydrocodone, and like Adderall, but they are not real prescription pills. These pills, some of them contained fentanyl and some contained meth. We are now seeing these counterfeit pills being sold in every single state in our country, and we are seizing them at record rates. To date this year, we have already seized more than 11 and a half million counterfeit pills. That is more than four times more than what we seized in 2019. DEA is committed to protecting the safety and the health of our communities by targeting and dismantling drug trafficking organizations wherever they operate, including on the dark net. And we are also committed to working together in partnership with our domestic and foreign law enforcement counterparts to do all that we can do to save lives. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce the acting director of ICE, Tay Johnson. Thank you, Ann. Good morning. I'm Tay Johnson, Acting Director for Immigration and Customs Enforcement. I join my fellow law enforcement partners here today and express my sincere appre appreciation of the collaboration between the Joint Criminal Opioid and Darknet Enforcement Team, which has resulted in today's announcement. As DHS's principal investigative agency, Focused on transnational crime, ICE's Homeland Security investigations identify, infiltrate, interdict, and dismantle organizations that utilize the dark web for criminal activity. Often, members of drug trafficking organizations and the infrastructure used to support drug trafficking on the dark web are in foreign countries. Therefore, HSI leverages its relationships with foreign partners to work collaboratively to dismantle these organizations and their infrastructure. HSI's covert operations also target transnational organizations and individuals who launder proceeds for criminal networks engaging in 
or supporting darknet marketplaces. They have been successful in tracing and seizing illicit proceeds derived from trafficking and distribution of online illicit opioids. Illicit dark web marketplaces represent a significant threat to public health, economic, and national security. And together, this team will continue to disrupt and destroy transnational criminal organizations that bring these narcotics and other dangerous contraband into the United States. At this time, I'd like to introduce Chief Postal Inspector Gary Barksdale. Good morning. Thank you, Director Johnson. You know, illicit drugs are killing Americans and people around the world at a very alarming rate. The criminals responsible use the dark web and other means to sell and ship narcotics and other dangerous goods around the world, often relying on the postal service or other private carriers. They're extremely sophisticated, tech savvy, and highly capable of adapting quickly to the ever-changing technologies. It's critical now more than ever that the United States Postal Inspection Service, along with our federal and international partners, cooperate to bring down these dark web sellers and dismantle the marketplaces they use to promote themselves. Our efforts have led to identifying and arresting these drug dealers wherever they lie in the world. Operation Dark Hunter showcases the work we can accomplish in partnerships with our local, state, federal, and international partners. This international operation has been very methodical, a coordinated effort where we're seeing concrete results in arrest, prosecution, and seizures of narcotics and other assets. We continue to increase our coordination with federal partners uh, domestically, like the high-intensity drug trafficking, otherwise known as HIDA, and other state and local task forces, as well as expand our efforts to work with Europol and other international partners. Our commitment is two-pronged to stop those who use the U.S. mail to send illegal narcotics and other dangerous goods, and to protect the many postal workers throughout the United States. I hope this operation sends a loud and clear message to those that seek to use the mail to distribute their drugs, that there's a coordinated effort to go after them, no matter where they are in the world. Thank you. And now we will open it up for questions. Just a reminder, we do have a hard stop at 730 due to scheduling reasons. I'll start with the first one, Evan, thanks for the question. Um, when it comes to China and Mexico, as I think folks heard uh, who listened to the press conference that the DEA administrator and I did uh, last month on the One Pill Can Kill campaign, uh, we know that precursor chemicals that uh, go into these pills are coming from labs in China uh, and manufactured in Mexico. The Attorney General uh, was just part of a very significant meeting with three other uh, cabinet officials uh, with meeting with Mexican authorities. The DEA administrator um, has also uh, met with the Mexican Attorney General, uh, and we've raised this issue uh, repeatedly. And uh, look, you can expect us to continue uh, to press our international uh, counterparts to press countries like China, to press uh, Mexico, to make sure that these labs cannot operate from their locations and send deadly pills here to this country, and that the flow of those precursor chemicals are stopped coming uh, through Mexico and ultimately to the United States. Does anyone have any on-topic questions? Mr. Bates, would you, would you ask a question? With due respect, Evan, we're going to stay on the topic. That's it. Any on-topic questions? Well, I have an on-topic and an off-topic. <laughs> <laughs> Please ask your on-topic questions. So, out of, the Sorry, arrest, out of the arrests that were made, do you expect from the other countries that these people are actually going to get uh, extradited into the U.S.? Do you 
you actually face, face justice here, number one. And number two, uh, now that the National School Board Association has issued basically an apology letter, does the department still stand by keep the same position with the, the Attorney General's memo? I'll ask the yeah. criminal division head to talk about the extradition issue. Certainly. Thank you. Our uh, Office of International Affairs is certainly uh, engaged in this effort of uh, extraditing a number of the defendants in these cases. As you see from the slide here, we have a number of partners from our European and Australian counterparts who are assisting in that effort as well. That is an ongoing process. Just to follow up on that, you know, as the Europol uh, deputy director said, um, the long arm of the law is present and consistent as reflected in this um, collaborative effort that we're announcing here today, and we won't rest until we do um, get folks who we have uh, identified who are responsible for this activity, and we will use all the means that we have, including our extradition authorities, uh, to, to bring them here to justice. Uh, and on your uh, other question, I think the Attorney General has been quite clear that uh, the job of the Department of Justice working with state and local law enforcement is to prevent violence to prevent threats of violence, whether it's in school boards, whether it's in hate crimes, whether it's against election workers, whether it's threats against judges or members of Congress. Our focus is on preventing violence and threats of violence. Thank you. Thank you. And you said you expect more to come. Do you have an idea of how many people you are targeting? Yes, thank you. Well, the, the operation lasts for 10 months. The, what is remarkable, I think, is that uh, we have been able to disseminate some information package to uh, our partners and they take actions without, um, um, without having any warning from, from the guys who are doing that. And uh, today, I think some of them, maybe they are, they are um, a little bit uh, worried about uh, who is going to be on the list, the next ones. So there are some, some investigations are still ongoing in some of the countries that you see here because some people have been identified and the work will be following because each time we arrest people, each time we search a house, we find new leads for new investigation. So the work is still ongoing. and the United States has to step up and do its part, but other countries that have a long-standing relationship with and role in Haiti's development uh, also need to step up as well. And then finally, with respect to supply chains, uh, what the President is hoping to do at the G20 is have the opportunity to get key countries aligned around some basics. For one thing, transparency. How do we know? It